number it means 86 surahs were revealed before the revelation of uh, suratul baqara it's a madani surah hmm. it was revealed when prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was in madina means after hijra after migration it is the longest surah of quran the most lengthy surah it has 286 verses aya and it has 40 ruku its name is al baqara baqara means the cow the cow mm. why its name is the cow the name of the surahs of quran are just for recognition they are not their topics it doesn't mean that this surah will discuss about cows no it's a comprehensive surah it has so many topics in it that it is the most knowledgeable surah of quran e majid a pro, uh, companion of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam abdullah bin umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu said when in the time of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam a person learned surah al baqarah and surah al ali imran we used to call him a scholar of quran so uh, baqara is such a comprehensive surah its its name and name of all surahs are just for their uh, recognition they are not their uh, topic so baqara means cow it's not bakra it's baqara bismillahir rahmanir rahim hmm. alif Lam. These are separate letters. Harufe mukattaya, separate letters. Alif is a letter, lam is the second letter, and mim is the third letter. In old Arabic times, Arabic poet used to use separate letters in their poem, mm. and they claim that. they are so good in language they are such a great linguists that they can use letters and no one will feel them absurd so when allah subhanahu wa taala revealed quran e majid allah subhanahu wa taala also put some examples of Uh, literal usage of word, letters in Quran e Majid because Quran Subhanallah Quran is the best book of the world and it is Allah's word on the one side Quran e Majid is the book of wisdom Quran e Majid has a great code of life in it Quran has supreme law of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in it. but on the other hand quran has the best example of arabic language allah subhanahu wa taala said we have re- revealed quran in arabiya arabiye mubin arabiye mubin best arabic language classical arabic language so allah subhanahu wa taala also used separate letters in 14 different surahs just to show the example of best language because arab were very impressed by good language skills so it's also a sign that this book is from allah subhanahu wa taala they don't have any hidden meaning although many people used to say that uh, uh, separate letters had has uh, uh, secret meanings but this is not true because prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam never never tell us, tell us <clears throat> that these chapter titles have some special meaning and never ever 
any companion of the prophet ask from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that o oh, messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam please tell us the meaning of separate actors because it was a common thing in arabic society so they didn't even bother it. so alif lam mim are separate letters and they have no special or hidden meaning zalika that al kitabu the book al means the 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 al is the sign of the and kita uh, very normally used in urdu this we have used this word in urdu normally uh, for book ye kitab hai meri so this is the same usage of this word actually kataba means to write and kitab means a written thing so al kitab the book la no raiba doubt la raiba not any doubt fi he in it fi means in and he mean it he is a pronoun and fi is a preposition zalik al kitab la raiba fi he and this is that book in which there is no doubt you have a book in your hands which has no doubt what does that mean it means that when you will recite quran when you will try to understand quran you will find universal truths in it you will find logics in it you will find bayina bayina examples in it and there is nothing which is ambiguous which is not clear so everything is clear whether you believe or not maybe some person will uh, understand quran and he will he will not be ready to accept islam okay that is everyone one's right to choose islam as a religion or to some something else as a religion but no one claim that i can't understand quran quran is very easy and clear to understand so this is the first statement about quran e majid that quran is beyond every doubt quran is above every doubt there is nothing fishy in quran e majid who then guidance lil muttaqin for those who safeguard selves adopt taqwa or who are pious pious is a common word lil muttaqin li again is a preposition and al muttaqin is a noun khudal lil muttaqin it is a guidance for those who are good conscious what is conscious conscious means to be aware of your acts always keep a check and balance on your acts what i am going to do why i am going to do this if i am going to meet someone why i am going to meet him or her if i am going to make someone my friend why why i have chosen this person to make my friend what is the reason because a muslim do everything for the sake of allah subhanahu wa taala he will make friend some people for the sake of allah subhanahu wa taala he will leave people for the sake of allah subhanahu wa taala our messenger of allah muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam our beloved prophet told us that only those people can enjoy their faith they can understand the taste of their faith who make friends 
for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who and friendship for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a complete theory of life. We will make friends to those people who will help us to be a good Muslim. And we will leave the people who will compel us to those things which are not suitable for a moment, for a good Muslim, for a believer. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made it a criteria for us. Only those people can enjoy their faith who will make friends for Allah's sake and who will leave friends for Allah's sake. So what is taqwa? Taqwa means to be aware of your decisions, to keep a check, a check and balance on your decisions, on your acts, what I am doing and why I am doing, and what will be the result of my actions. Because for every action, for every word, we are answerable in the front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. For every act. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said that you will have to answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your every act, for your every deed. Even it is small as a grain of sand. Still you will have to answer. If it will be a good deed, Allah will give you its ajr, its reward. Even it is small as a grain of sand. And if it's a bad deed, it's a wrong deed, you will have to face the punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even that deed is small as a grain of sand. So taqwa means to keep a check on yourself, to be aware of yourself and always keep questioning from yourself that I am doing what I am doing. For what? What is the reason? What is the purpose? What I am? What I am trying to get? I am working for what? Even if we are doing something good, we should keep an eye on our intention. If I am doing charity, whether I am doing charity for my fame or I am doing charity for some something else or I am doing charity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will accept only those acts which are totally for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is called taqwa this is called ikhlas so taqwa means to be aware of our actions keep check and balance on ourselves so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that Quran is a book of guidance, but only those people can get guidance from quran e majid who will be aware of themselves, who will keep a strict eye on themselves. If a person will learn Quran and then he will never try to understand what is he doing and why is he doing, then he can't even understand the guidance properly and he can't follow too. So if you want to enjoy the package of Quran, you will have to make a check on yourself. Everyone. And in the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is telling, is describing some specific characteristics which can make a person muttaki, pious. So Allah said, Allah zina, the pious people are those who yu'minuna who believe, they believe, bil in unseen, who believe in unseen, who believe in the imperceptible. This is the first characteristic 
of a pious person that they believe in the unseen that they believe in imperceptible what does that mean that mean all those things which are relevant to relevant to our beliefs like allah subhanahu wa taala is ghaib also what is ghaib what is unseen unseen or ghaib are those things my dear which are out of our senses we can't smell them we can't see them we can't taste them we can't hear them we can't touch them and they can't touch us and even we can't feel them six sense so first of all allah subhanahu wa taala is ghaib we can realize that there is a god there is allah subhanahu wa taala who is running the whole world but we can feel his presence through our senses so what is out of our senses it is unseen after that angels angels are unseen jinns are even unseen we are reciting quran this time and <clears throat> our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whenever you will learn quran you will recite quran or you will teach quran angels came to that place and they will cover the place from the earth to the sky you can understand how many how many angels are here with me and with you uncountable but we can't feel them in any way our senses are not able to sense their presence this is the ghaib and we also uh, can't uh, feel the jinns by our senses so they are also the ghaib janna is ghaib janna exist now at this time but where is that janna we don't know jahannam also exist but we don't know where is it so jannat jahannam are also ghaib hell and paradise they are ghaib so we believe in all these things because we believe in quran e majid we believe in our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and akhira life after death azab e qabr sawab e qabr life out life after death it's also is un is something unseen but we believe in it we strongly believe in it and we should do because our book kitabullah quran e majid told us about it and our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us about it so we so we believe in all these things we can't see them we can't experience them we can't feel them but but we believe them why why we are believing it in it because we believe in quran we believe in our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so my dear the first characteristic or the first condition to be a pious person is the belief is the belief believe in what believe in all the unseen which is described by quran e majid simple the second thing wa yuqimu nas salata they perfectly establish salah allahu akbar who establish salah what is salah salah means prayer in arabic 
Salaam means to call someone. Salaam means to bless someone. Salaam means to make dua. All that meanings are taken by word salah in Arabic. But the salah which is under discussion over here is not out, out of these four meanings. In Arabic, word salah has four meanings. Prayer, making dua, giving blessings, or calling someone. All these four meanings are not suitable for that specific term of salah, which we called namaz. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Muslims, aqimu salah ya yuhallah zinamun aqimu salah O believers, establish the salah. Companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to him and asked, O messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, please tell us how should we establish salah? Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, establish salah as you would see me establish uh, established salah. Copy me, follow me, and as I am establishing salah, you should also establish salah like this. So from the day one, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us how to offer salah, how to establish salah. And that is the way which you know, which I know, and which every Muslim knows. This is the salah. Two rakahs of Fajr, four rakahs of Zohar, four rakahs of Asr, three rakahs of Maghrib, and four rakahs of Isha are first, and other um, rakahs are Sunnah. So, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu wasallam taught the way of Salah when he was in Mecca. And when he came to Medina, first of all, he established Jama'at of Salah. Jama'at. Collective Salah. Congregational prayer. The first work which he have done in Medina, he built a mosque, Masjid Nabawi, and he started namaz e jamaat collective salah. And from that day till today, in haram e and in haram e means Kaaba and uh, Masjid-e-Nabawi. In the same way, in the same regime, Muslim Ummah is offering prayer, and there is only one meaning of salah, which is established in Muslims, that is namaz. So sometimes some ignorant people used to say, why you are taking meaning of salah means namaz? No, not a single Arab take its meaning that ritual. Yes, uh, uh, in, 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 uh, in language, a single <coughs> Arab Linguist not take the meaning of salah as namaz. But in Islam, our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, told us that whenever your Lord, your Allah said that, Aqimu salah, it means this, this namaz. So namaz is the first duty of a believer after embracing Islam. Whenever a person will embrace Islam, his first duty will be salah. And when a Muslim child will be grown up till nine, salah will become his duty. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, told us that teach the way of salah when your children will be seven years old and if he will not <clears throat> be regular in his prayers after 10th of his year then you should punish him so salah is the first duty of every muslim and without salah we can never be a good muslim 
whether I am doing charity, whether I am teaching Quran, whether I am doing parda, whether a man is having beard, he is very good, he is very pious, but if he is not regular in his prayers, he is not a good Muslim and he can never be a good Muslim. So, Salah is compulsory and there is no excuse for Salah. Even Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, a person, if he is sick, still he had to offer Salah. He has to offer Salah. If he can't stand up, offer his Salah while he's sitting. If he can't sit, he should offer his Salah while he's lying on his bed. If he can't even raise his hand, okay, he should offer his Salah only with signs. Just nod his head. But you will have to offer your Salah until you are alive. So in battlefield, there is no excuse for Salah. On that bed, there is no excuse of Salah. And at this time, yes, this time, in today's life, you can see majority of Muslims are not offering their prayers. They are not, regular is very big word. They are not irregular namazi. They are not paying any attention on Salah. A single, a single attention. No, no attention. So my dear, this is the first reason of our downfall. Because when mm. we have break, uh, you are saying something? No, I, I didn't. I was just, uh, okay. uh, I didn't say anything. When we have broken, the promise between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is that promise? Which we have learned in Surah Fatiha. Oh Allah, we will do ibadah for you only. So, so first ibadah, which is uh, demand from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is salah. And we are not offering our salahs. Then what else we will do? A person who is not able to get up and offer his salah, how could he do something big? Salah, there is no money which you have to spend on salah. Uh, nothing is difficult in salah. So if a man or woman is not able to offer, offer his salah or her salah five times a day, how could he do something big? How? No, these are just words. Lip service. And Allah is not ready to get lip service. He wants to do practical from us. And the first practice is Salah. So if a person, if, whether he is a man or a woman, if he is a believer or, and he is not regular his prayer, he has a very, very, very weak belief. So Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said that if a person will not saying his prayers without any reason, he is not a believer. It's an authentic hadith. He said, if a person is leaving, missing his prayers deliberately, he's not a believer. And it's a very, very, very big thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya yuhallazina amanu aqimu salata wa la takunu minal mushrikeen. O oh, believers, O oh, believers, offer your prayers. Don't behave like the people who are mushrik, who are doing shirk. So you can understand. Salah is a compulsion and we have no choice to leave Salah. After that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, wa mimma razaqnahum yunfikun. And these are the people who are spending their money in charity out of what we have provided for their sustenance. 
the money which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is providing us for our lives, for our, for our expenditure, we have to do some charity out of it. Whatever we have is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have nothing which is our personal um, wealth, nothing. Everything is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we have money, if we have house, uh, if we have clothes, everything, everything, everything is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the provider actually. All other things are just means. So when we have wealth, it is our foremost duty, first and the foremost, that we should share it with others. We should cut down our expenses. We should limit our desires and save a part of money for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for charity. There are two types of charity, charity in Islam. One is first, duty. That is zakat, you know. And the second is sadaqat, nafaqat. It is not um, our duty. It is not our... Um, it is not a liability on us, but we will have to pay it deliberately with happy heartedly to the people who are needy. Uh, for example, nowadays, 85% area of Pakistan is flooded and people are homeless, helpless. So what should we do? We have to sacrifice for them. We should try to cut our expenses down. We should, to, uh, we should try to save money and we should spend that money on those people. This is our duty. And why should we have to do this? Because we want to make our Allah happy from us. So on the day of judgment, he will be kind with us because we are kind on the earth with the humanity. So my dear, these are three characteristics. There are two are left, which we will discuss inshallah tomorrow, uh, on Monday inshallah. Tomorrow is not a class with you. On Monday inshallah, we have discussed yeah. three characteristics, three qualities. Pious huh. people are those who believe in unseen and pious people are those who are regular with their salats, with their prayers, with their namas. And pious people are those who used to spend their money, their earning on needy people, and they are always ready to share their things with others. Is it clear to you? Yes. Yes. Any question, my dear? No, I don't. Okay. And inshallah, see you on Monday, my dear. Okay.